Okay, I'm going to give this a shot again. Um, when I hit my button this morning to record, the first thing Facebook told me was that my connection was too weak. And then it came back and said, oh, now you can connect. And then it said, oh, no, it's it's too weak. <laughs> Like, okay, are the waves getting through to Winsboro, South Carolina today? I don't know, but I think it's working now. So we're going to go ahead and talk to you about Psalm 16. Welcome to Wake Up in the Word. One of the distinct disadvantages of doing this live is that you get me, you know, warts and all. So uh, whatever's going on with the electronics or with me or if I'm half asleep or forgot to comb my hair, it all comes out, doesn't it? Well, let's go straight to the Word of God and that'll cover a multitude of sins this morning. Psalm 16. Psalm 16 is a beautiful, beautiful short psalm, only 11 verses this morning. But listen to what God's Word says. Keep me safe, O God, for in you I take refuge. You know, if you're one of those that very much like David, when he was struggling with his relationship with Saul and having to run and hide and didn't know when Saul was going to be in a good mood or if he was going to have a fit or if he was going to uh, fly off the handle, you just he just didn't know what was going to happen. You may have to live around someone like that or work around someone like that. Uh, whatever your situation, perhaps you've had this same kind of prayer as you start the day. Keep me safe, O God, for in you I take refuge. Verse 2, I said to the Lord, you are my Lord. Apart from you, I have no good thing. As for the saints who are in the land, they are the glorious ones in whom is all my delight. The sorrow of those will increase who run after other gods. And I will not pour out their libations of blood or take up their names on my lips. Lord, you have assigned me my portion and my cup. You have made my lot secure. The boundary lines have fallen for me in pleasant places. Surely I have a delightful inheritance. I will praise the Lord who counsels me. Even at night, my heart instructs me. I have set the Lord always before me because he is at my right hand. I will not be shaken. Therefore, my heart is glad and my tongue rejoices. My body also will rest secure because you will not abandon me to the grave, nor will you let your Holy One see decay. You have made me, you, excuse me, you have made known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence with eternal pleasures at your right hand. Now, you may have noticed what happens to this psalm as it goes toward the end. As we get to the end, it becomes messianic in nature, and you have not only the truth of the resurrection, but the truth of the rapture all taking place in those last couple of verses. First of all, knowing that my body also will rest secure, even when life may have uh, appeared to have left it, because he says, you will not abandon me to the grave nor will you let your Holy One see decay, something put in capitals uh, in, in my particular version this morning. Uh, who is it talking about? As much as God loved David, David was not the Holy One. He is not the ultimate person. He's not the Messiah, but the Messiah is going to be, as has already been predicted in Scripture, a descendant of David. So down through the ages, he's speaking toward the Holy One, the Messiah, who will not be left in the grave, but instead will be resurrected to life. He said, you have made known to me the path of life, and you will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pleasures in your right hand. And when we get to the New Testament, we discover that after the resurrection, Jesus Christ ascends to heaven, where he sits where? At the right hand of God, uh, making intercession for us until one day when he comes back to claim us. So a beautiful psalm that also reminds us of God's protection, but points us toward the day in which he is coming again for us. Listen to this. Uh, Philip says that David's prospects reached be far beyond, far beyond, for David foresaw also the truth of rapture. 
And when he saw this, he said, you know, the path of the path of life begins at the very lowest point in the dark regions of the underworld, but it leads up, up, out of Hades, out through the portals of the tomb, up to the heights of heaven, up to the very right hand of God. That's the ultimate prospect of the godly man. Where is the Lord Jesus now? At God's right hand. Where are we going to be? At God's right hand. Where is there fullness of joy? Uh, where are those pleasures forevermore? They are at God's right hand. Doesn't disclose what those are, are all going to be, but we know where to find them. And that's in the presence of the Lord, the Lord that loves us and loved us enough that he didn't leave us in our sin and our darkness, but instead sent us a savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who would rescue us and make all of this possible. Well, that's what Psalm 16 is reminding us of today. So even if you're just in the main struggle of daily life that starts out this psalm, where David is just saying, keep me safe, O Lord, for in you I take refuge. Or if you're just getting ready and looking forward to the day in which we'll all be with the Lord in heaven, absent from the body and at home with the Lord, uh, it's a beautiful psalm to remind us that God is in control. And when we look at how crazy the world seems to be, it's a good psalm to read this morning. Well, thank you for joining me. I uh, hope you'll join me again tomorrow for Wake Up in the Word. We'll pray all the equipment works properly. And we'll once again read a passage of Scripture to start our day. You have a blessed day in the Lord, and we'll see you again tomorrow.